Hello guys, uh, welcome to Anatomy and Physiology screencast. Um, this is your kind of last lesson on the muscular system. And what we're going to have a look at is the role of motor units in muscular contraction. Okay, so by the end of the lesson, what we're looking for you to be able to do tomorrow is to be able to kind of focus on this concept of a motor unit. A motor unit is the whole term. You don't really use it actually in the in the exam answer but it will be in the question so when you talk about a motor unit that's the thing that's responsible for a muscle contraction what we have to look at is the concept of kind of a motor neuron an action potential a neurotransmitter so called um a line um, and then we're going to look at the all or none law which kind of allows muscle contraction to take place so what we're going to look then if I just go through the motor units of muscle contraction, how we're looking through this, skeletal muscle contraction only can only occur when an electrical impulse is sent from the central nervous system. So the brain and spine will send this kind of impulse to your muscle fibres. Okay, in order for that to happen, okay, motor neurons or especially the cells which kind of transmit impulses to the fibres. So in order for us to get this kind of information or impulse, as it's called in physiology, this electrical impulse, we need motor neurons to transmit it. Okay. Okay, so it's done via a number of mechanisms, which we'll go through in a minute. Uh, a motor unit, okay, is like the overall term to describe this muscular contraction. So if I go through from here then, how we're going to start. So basically, if you have a look here, you've got the kind of spinal cord here, um, which is kind of when the central nervous system will send information. If you look here, you've got the kind of the key things I'm focused on as motor neuron. Okay, so the motor neuron will send the information okay down the motor neuron axon okay which will then send it to the muscle fibers okay I'm not too concerned about the motor units at the moment because that's the overall thing that we're looking at so they'll just get circled there and it goes to the muscle fibers what we've got to be able to do is go from ultimately these key bits here so if I just kind of get my uh, thing here you're basically looking at getting from the motor neuron all the way down to the via the axon okay down to the muscle fibers it's in between these two bits here that we're really focused on so if i go through down to here now then so you've got here motor neuron okay if you can make notes and now your job you've seen the diagram you can stop it there what you don't need to use in the diagram is a motor unit so what i'm looking for you to do now is just to make a quick note here on this section so you've got a uh, motor neuron here motor neuron will be in your core now notes a motor neuron okay the role of it is to carry impulses from the brain and spinal cord to the muscle fibers in order to do that has to travel down the motor neuron axon, okay, which you looked at on the diagram. So what happens then? So we've got to send this impulse via the motor neuron. In order to do this, we need an action potential. So the potential for muscular contraction action. So what we're looking for is this action potential. What it is, is a positive electrical charge. And what it does is it sends the impulse down the axon of the motor neuron and towards something called the neuromuscular junction. Okay, so the neuromuscular junction, like any junction, is a point at which you know you have to stop sometimes you have to stop sometimes you can carry on now the thing that allows you the reason why you've got to stop is because you have this thing called a synaptic cleft now a synaptic cleft is a gap between the motor neuron axon which is carrying the impulse via the action potential and the muscle fiber so the synaptic cleft is a gap cleft is a gap what we need to do is make sure that we can send this impulse across the gap into the muscle fiber okay so once we have this action potential, once we get to the neuromuscular junction and the synaptic cleft, okay, the next role is something called, it's the next thing, that the thing that allows it to cross that gap is a neurotransmitter called acetoline. So basically, action potential travels down the neuromuscular junction, but it can't go over this gap called the synaptic cleft without this neurotransmitter, so called acetoline. So basically, what we need to happen here Acetoline is secreted into the synaptic cleft, into this gap. So if you imagine it, it's almost like a, a gap. At, you come to a junction in a road, okay, but there's a massive, massive kind of a divot in it, and you can't get across. What happens is acetoline is secreted into the gap in the road, which allows your car to then travel across, in this case, an impulse to go across the gap. So once it gets across, I mean, you can have a look back on here, you can see all the information down here. So you're looking there, you're thinking, right, so you've got, um, it comes from here, down to the neuromuscular junction, the synaptic cleft here. Okay, what we need to do is get this impulse across into the muscle fibers here. So in order to do that, 
Akato line is set into that little gap. Okay, so into the gap here, which acts as a kind of a, a buffer for the impulse to come across. When it gets across, we then have an issue. Okay, the, the kind of the level of electrical charge within our impulse will dictate whether the muscle is going to contract or not. This is known as the all or none law. So basically, if the electrical charge is above the required threshold, the muscle fiber will contract. All muscle fibers within the motor unit, which is kind of a motor unit, is the way that a muscle contracts. Okay, they will contract. However, I'm sure you can think of the flip side to that. If the electrical charge is below the threshold required, none of the muscle fibers at all will contract. So you've got this bit in here. So the all or none law is massive because after all of this this journey of the impulse from the central nervous system via the motor neurons, okay, down uh, to the neuromuscular junction, across the synaptic cleft via um, the secretion of acetylene, okay, once it gets across there into the muscle fiber, the level of electrical charge has to be above the threshold for anything to happen within your muscle cell, muscle fibers for them to contract. Okay, so that's massively important because if it's not above that threshold, it won't contract. Okay, so quick recap. Things you need to know in terms of muscular contraction. You need to know motor neuron. This should, these should all be kind of within your Cornell notes. I'll put it in this order because I look at it and think, right, motor neuron, we know what the role of that is. Okay, so that takes the impulse. Okay, it transfers or transmits the impulse from the central nervous system to the muscle fiber. It does that via the action potential. Okay, so the action potential is the electrical charge. Okay, and it sends the impulse down to the neuromuscular junction okay when it gets to neuromuscular junction we're then at a point where at that junction we have a problem because the synaptic cleft needs to be crossed and it's a gap between the neuromuscular junction and the muscle fiber so in order to get across this gap it needs to be filled you don't have to write this i'm trying to get this as a picture in your head acetylene is a neurotransmitter that's secreted into the synaptic cleft and once it gets across the synaptic cleft into the muscle fiber we have to take into consideration the all or none law. Okay, so that then would dictate whether the electrical charge is above the threshold or below the threshold. Okay, thank you very much. These are your, your Cornell note headings. I, you don't have to do something to clear twice if you don't want to, but it's important that we understand that it, it does come into play twice. We get to it, but in order to get across it, we have to have this acetylene um, secreted into it for the kind of impulse to carry across. Thank you.